in this session, we'll be looking at using geometry to create realistic, deep objects for our games. We've looked at breaking down real objects into geometry. Let's look at creating some completely original objects out of geometry. It helps with this process to start with a purpose in mind. For example, your game may require a certain type of object. In this case, let's think about a medieval boot. Our game takes place in a fantasy universe, so there's no real requirement to be accurate to existing greaves designs. With that said, it's probably good to look up some reference. Once you've found some design aspects that you like, you can begin messing with geometry and finding shapes you enjoy. First of all though, this boot is going to have to fit on a foot. So I'm going to just quickly muck in a foot for us to work around. It doesn't really matter if it's anatomically accurate, this foot's just going to sit there underneath our drawing. I'm going to make a new layer above this layer. I'm going to name the first layer foot and the second layer boot. On the boot layer, we can start playing with some shapes. Things like a big steel cap toe and maybe another big cap on the heel. Looking at reference photos of different sorts of boots and shoes from history, from other people's designs, will help you figure out what aspects you like and what aspects you want to adapt for your design. If you're feeling creative, you might create some completely new aspects. Perhaps we're interested in showing this shoe to be very aggressive, so we might add spikes along the base. Big, blocky shape. It's not a boot that messes around. And we have some shapes we're sort of happy working with there. While I've been making these 2D shapes, I've also been thinking about the 3D geometry behind them. There are some aspects of this particular design that I'm not really happy with, so I'm going to go ahead and add some extra things. I'm going to add a break in the grip for the space where our feet don't really push hard on the ground and then have it recur again at the heel. I'm going to add a layer between the base of the sole and the grip so we're not sort of stepping on our own spikes, I guess. And I'm going to add a big spike out of the toe so that if our boot wearer feels like kicking somebody, it's really going to hurt. Also, it might be useful to have a way to get in and out of our boot rather than have it built around the wearer. So I'm going to add a big buckle to the top of the boot and a strap, maybe two buckles. You can never have too many buckles. If I switch off my foot layer, we can now see our boot. I'm just gonna move this to the side here. We've looked at understanding geometry, and we understand that this front shape needs to be a dome. So if we're gonna draw this on a perspective where the base of the foot sits here, there's the instep, there's the top of the foot, and there's where it arcs upwards, our dome sits here somewhere. We're looking at the top of the shoe here. So any shapes or patterns we wanted to add would go on this top half, but we're not really concerned about that just yet. We're looking at the geometry of the shoe. This shape also forms a kind of curved half cylinder across the top of the shoe. So we'll just add that in there. Let's just erase away that foot shape and we can keep working with this geometry. So this half curve is now in place. Our steel cap heel will almost be invisible from this angle. We can just show a hint of it around the base. The part of the boot that covers the ankle, we'll actually be able to see into the boot from here. This forms a big cylinder that we can look down into and see the inside of the boot. Let's add those buckles on. Just gonna make these simple squares and the strap around the boot. We haven't actually drawn in any seams, but this implies that these buckles can be fastened and unfastened and the wearer can tighten up the boot as they so choose. The grip, again, is going to be difficult to see from this angle because it's facing down and we're looking at the shoe from above. So we'll just get a hint of it around some of the edges. Just fixing up some of these curves here that aren't quite lining up the way I'd like. And of course, finally, our spike. I'm actually gonna make this spike a pyramid shape and curve it up slightly to make it a little bit more threatening. Erase any additional lines. I'm gonna go ahead and shade the inside of the boot. And now we've created a game object using shapes and geometry that we can draw from any angle we like because we have a complete understanding of how it's created. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.